Hey, I'm Josh with Vacuums R Us in Colorado, and today we're going to be doing a lower hose replacement on a Shark Duo Clean. It is a model UV810. So if you have any UV800 series, this is going to apply to you. It's going to be an identical process. I'll list any other applicable model numbers that are going to be compatible down below. So what we have here is super common. One of the most common failure points on sharks is there is a hose down here. Um, where the air flows through from the head and it ends up going through all these complicated things up into the canister and that hose uh, will crack. Uh, you can see my hose is cracked right there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep this unit out of the landfill where Shark wants it to go. I'm going to get it back in service. We're going to replace that lower hose. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the main body out of the way entirely. All right, so I'll pop this out of the way. Get that brush roll out of the way. I actually take this brush out too so it doesn't fall out while I'm working. And we'll flip this puppy over. Uh, this is one of the shark units that use security bits. These are, uh, a lot of people call them star-shaped bits. All right, so I got a full set of bits here. Um, I'm gonna be using T20s around the back, the size of security bit that's back there, and it looks like a T10 on the front. I got all my bits there. And this is actually the exact bit that we have listed on our website for those of you who are doing shark repair. It's a set of all the different possible bits that every every shark uses. So, so far we've got all T20s on the back of the machine thus far. Okay, so I'm going to change over to my T10 bits that are on the bottom. So across the front of the machine, I have these smaller bits. So we've got some more, it looks like T20s across the top right here. All right, we've got four T20s across the back. Let's see if our lid comes off now. We're getting loose. I feel something hold me up in here. Nope, 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 nope. That was it. All right, we got full access now. That was not so bad. So next we got to get the hose out. I see a small tab right there. Um, I'm assuming that the hose is glued into this piece right here, which inserts in there. So this hose has a metal wire in it, which I'm gonna cut. I'm not sure if these are really strong enough for that. Yep, I cut it, okay. So I'm gonna cut that wire so I can kind of pull this out of my way and maybe I can lift this up. Again, I've got wires ran through this channel right here, so I don't have a lot of play. I don't really have a lot of wiggle room here. I'm kind of trying to turn this over so that without damaging the wires, I can get to the other tab. So there's one tab on the top. I'm finding another tab on the side. So I'm assuming I'm probably gonna see that there are three tabs on this that need to be depressed. So I got two tabs out. I'm gonna turn this back again, see if I can get back to this other side where I'm assuming there's probably a third tab. Yes, there is, and I can just see it. So now I've got this out. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rip this, this shredded hose out of here. And hopefully it rips out all the plastic with it and I can re-glue the new hose into this hose holder thing here. All right, so we got our hose. Uh, I, I, I put the hose in here and it's really tight and, and it's mostly because of the skin, as it were, of the other hose, a lot of it peeled off in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean this out a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm getting this stuff out of here, actually. Here we go. That isopropyl alcohol loosened that right up, actually. I think it actually loosened up a bunch of the glue that was in there. And this this leftover plastic is stripping right out of here. So, oh yeah, it's coming right out. There we go. Yeah, the alcohol got it right out. So as far as adhesive, I, I would encourage you not to use super glue. Super glue is super, it's brittle. It doesn't retain any elasticity. I'm using, it's called E6000. It's like a... It's an adhesive that I found that it, it, it stays flexible over time, which is good for these type of parts because these type of parts are moving constantly. So that is now glued in there and that's exciting. Okay, so now the other end, I'm gonna bring the, bring the head back here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna rip this wire out and hopefully strip out as much of this plastic as possible in the process. All right. 
So that is a long hose. And you want to be careful with your wires right here. They're sensitive. I'm not unhooking this. I'm just working on it like this because the more stuff you take apart, the more you got to put back together again. I've got a lot of that plastic hose that's left in there. If you have a needle nose, that will help. I, we've got these because we use these for unclogs all the time. So all the wire has been ripped out and what's left. There we go. Oh, look at that. Came right out. We got the other end out too. Came right with it. it actually unsnapped itself and came right out. That was pretty slick. All right. So same deal. I'm going to rip all this plastic out of this hose end here. I'm going to add some more glue right here. I'm going to go ahead and screw that in. Trying to get that in just right because I'm bulging out a little bit right there. And you'll see where it's threaded. You'll see how it threads in. Come on. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, so I've got this glued in. I've got it screwed in tight. Now I'm going to let it dry overnight because when we manhandle this back into there, there's going to be a lot of strain back and forth on this. And if this thing pops off, it is a pain to get back on again. So we're going to let this dry so it's on there before we start manhandling this back up into there and getting it to snap in exactly where it goes. All right, so uh, this needs to be reinserted. I'm going to look at the direction we're going here. And if you look inside, you'll see where these tabs are going to line up. So there's two tabs, if you notice. <clears throat> On these, this tab is rather small, and this tab is larger. Small, large. The large tab is on the rear of the machine. The small tab is on the front of the machine. So you need to get it in there so that those are lined up as, as much as possible. And I am carefully pushing the new hose into place with a flathead screwdriver by grabbing the tabs on either side and then pushing those tabs up. Again, you need to be super careful because if you if you uh, slip, what you'll do is you will puncture the brand new hose that you just put in there. Boop. All right, we popped in. Okay. That is the most difficult part of the repair right there. Okay, so now we're going to put it all back together. We got the hose inside by just shoving the stupid thing and it clipped in and it's secure in there. Okay, so this wire comes back around here and this will pop in here. Now this particular unit, <clears throat> there's a spring assist down here that helps to lock it upright in place. It goes right there, you'll see on your unit. Um, ours was actually broken. So <clears throat> that is what it is. And now this hose, there's a notch right here. I'm going to notch on the hose right here. So that hose will twist one way or the other into there. Now, if I wasn't pressed for time, it would make sense to glue these pieces one at a time. Instead of uh, gluing both ends of it, you glue one end, put it in the hose, then glue the other end, wait another 24 hours. Uh, that way you could, or, <clears throat> or you could maybe screw it in. Um, that way you could get this to line up a little bit better. You can see how I'm struggling to get this twist on here. Nope, there we go, I got it. There's the, there's the top. Pop the bottom in. Again, you got to be careful not to damage the plastic or the hose. There we go. All right, and that's in. And there's a little bit of a kink right there, but that's not bad at all. That will actually work itself out with use. There's that. And now we can put the rest of it back together again, which is really mostly just this top has got to be screwed back down. So I'm going to look at my wiring, make sure that my wiring is out of the way. Nothing's out of place. I'm not going to pinch anything when I put this together. I'll put that back on there. There's a little switch there that goes up through the top housing. You want to make watch to make sure you get that in correctly. All right, and now we will put our screws back in. 
Okay, we got four across the top. And we're going to put the larger screws that go in the back here. Okay, now we're going to change to a T10 bit. We're going to go ahead and put our small screws in the front. All right, so both these brush rollers need to go back in. There go, there's one, snaps in. And we'll put this brush in. And then we'll snap the cap back on. This ridiculous cleaning tool, I, I do not. How does this stupid thing go in there? Anybody ever uses it? I think it's still locking up, right? I think there's a I think there's a lock mechanism on both sides on this model. So the one side is broken. <clears throat> that that it makes sense. The one side is broken and the other side is still intact, so it's still functional for the time being. All right, we'll put it back together and make sure that the power brush still works. We messed with a lot of wires and stuff in there, so we want to be we want to be sure that everything still functions. The low function works. All right. We are good to go. That was a successful hose, hose replacement. All right, best of luck. We have these hoses listed on our website. I believe I also mentioned uh, we've got the glue listed as well. Uh, I'll list it down in the description uh, in addition to the bit set that I used. Um, again, I used a T10 and a... Actually, I used a T20 and a T10. That is correct. T20 and a T10.